Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm going to do my review on the Vero Engineering Impulse. So I just got this in uh, recently from a buddy. This is a loner from Sharp underscore Marbles on Instagram. Again, that's Sharp underscore Marbles on Instagram. His name is Doug. He's such a fantastic guy for letting me check these out. Um, and I am doing this review pretty quick because I'm getting them out to Kyle, DTOM Knives and Gear. Uh, he sent me this along with the CKF 520 and Kyle just got a 523 and he wants to do a comparison on them and I thought it would be a great opportunity and Doug agreed. So I'm going to go ahead and send these out to him real soon and I wanted to get the reviews up. So... The Vero Engineering Impulse. A little bit about Vero Engineering. It was started by Joseph Vero. I believe he has an engineering background, but I'm not sure. Um, he started this knife company, I believe, this year in 2020. Um, and he's had maybe five or six drops at this point with four different models, I think. Maybe more. And... He's absolutely taken the knife community by storm. Uh, these are next to impossible to get. Uh, they are fantastic knives. The designs are amazing. People are drooling over them. There's, excuse me, there's Facebook communities or groups for uh, Bureau Engineering. He makes pry bars that people... You can't find those very much either. It's just crazy how much this company has blown up in a year. Um, this has been one amazing year in terms of ne uh, new knife companies coming out. I got to say, 2020 has been really rough in some ways, but in the knife community, it's been pretty sweet. Um, you have Vero Engineering. You have Finch Knife Co. You have Asher uh, Knives. Uh, there's plenty more out there. I just, you know, I'm blanking right now. But just those three alone, uh, I think James Brand is new. Um, there's a few other ones. Quiet Carry maybe started this year. Um, so it's just amazing. Anyway, the uh, Vero Impulse here is a very cool design. Um, he definitely has a different design language, but... The, his knives are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, if you look at this, it's almost like a clip point tanto. Um, that's what I'm going to call it. Modified clip point tanto, maybe. <laughs> uh, this has a uh, KME edge on it, mirror edge from Doug. Um, he absolutely killed it with this uh, sharpening job. I actually cut myself uh, right here when I, not when I unboxed it, but I was unboxing something else with this, uh, and I poked myself somehow. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, you know how it goes, but centering is dead on. Um, it's just a gorgeous example of a knife. So for materials, we have titanium handles, titanium backspacer. We have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this is M390. I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty positive this is M390 just based off of knowing what Vero does. Um, these are made by Best Tech. Best Tech is the OEM for these. Um, and they did a great job. Uh, I honestly could compare this to Riot quality in terms of OEM work out of China. Um, the detent is dialed in perfectly. It is very hard to fail. There you go. I had to stick my finger in there to get it to fail. That's not fair. So you can't really fail it naturally. Um, yeah, so they did a great job on fit and finish. I have honestly never felt another knife with the finish that this has on the titanium. It's such a smooth finish feel to it. Um, it's like shiny and smooth. Those are technical terms, guys. Um, but it's just amazing. If you ever get one in hand, you'll know what I mean. We have a very cool clip here um, with the Vero logo on it. It works fantastic. A little bit does stick out of your pocket, um, but I didn't have any problem with that. I carried this in my left pocket, actually, uh, with no fear because the flipper tab is so minimal 
it's not like one of those ones that sticks out here and you'd worry about brushing your hand past it and having the knife open or, or having it push against something like it and it's not going anywhere with this detent you have to mean to open this um, not that it's stiff but just the way it's dialed in um, talking about the flipper tab this is the probably the coolest thing about this knife to me is this flipper tab it's like this it's like a stem almost. It's so hard to explain, but obviously you can see it there. Uh, it's like a stem and then you just, it has a little jimping on top and you just pull down on it. it it's very intuitive. It's, it's really genius. I, I love this uh, flipper. At first I thought it was a little harsh, you know, flipping that, but either I got used to it or, you know, I was just being, you know, I was being a little girl about it or something. I don't know. But it's a fantastic flipper. And then when it's open, you have this flat part. And you can see the top of the uh, flipper tab there is, is locked up. That's where it locks up is on the flipper tab. Make sure I got that right. Yeah. So the lockup is actually on the flipper tab. Wait, what? No. Eh. But the detent ball, no, so it's locking up right there. You see that right underneath the flipper tab there? That's the lock face. So it just looks like that from the front here, but it's actually down in there a little bit. You'll see that's where it actually locks up. That's where the, the, the ceramic detent ball is. So again, it's just a genius, a genius design. Um, Joseph just has something going for him when it comes to designing knives he knows what he's doing he's hitting home runs left and right um ergonomically this knife is very comfortable in hand uh when you're choked back like this my hand wraps around the bottom of the clip here so the part that kind of lips up doesn't touch my fingers my two fingers wrap around here and then the third one goes in front of the clip um so it's pretty cool how that works out for a lefty because you'd think left-handed it would be a hot spot or something. Honestly, it's less comfortable in the right hand because that part of the clip is digging into my palm, whereas left-handed, it just lands perfectly. And that could just be my hand, but you have a little bit of jimping right here, um, which is intuitive. It, it works great when you're in this grip. Now, if you want to choke up here, which I'm guessing this flat here is intended to choke up on, it would have been really nice to have some more jimping up here. But, um, you know, maybe design-wise that didn't work. Um, but this feels really good. So does this. Um, I believe they're coming out with, or they already have, a mini impulse. Um, I would love to check one of those out. I just think ergonomically it might fit a little better for me. Although I would worry about this flat part. So, I don't know. I'd have to get one in hand and see. But yeah, it's great ergonomically. Action. So, the drop right-handed, it, it feels a little strange because you have all this room here. And it kind of scares you to let the blade drop that far. But once you do it, you understand. It's going to hit your nail just like any other knife would. So it works fantastic. It is not drop shutty. Um, you have to shake it a little bit, but it is very smooth. So it takes a little bit, but once you get it going, it really rides home. Uh, so action is very good. Would I prefer it to just kind of guillotine shut like the CKF 520 does? Yes, I would absolutely prefer that. But this is still very good action. So action is fantastic. Carry is great again. Um, it is very sharp. Now again, this is not the factory edge, but it slices very nice. The blade geometry is perfect. You have this little tip here on the Tanto. So if you wanna just kinda of pop something open or let's say you're trying to open like that plastic, um, I'm blanking on what it's called, but cellophane. If you're trying to open cellophane like around a, a, a movie case or video game case or something, but you don't want to cut 
into anything. You could just kind of drop that tip in a little and slice and it works perfectly. Same with like a package. If you're worried about cutting something in the contents, you can just put the little tip in and pull back. I, um, I understand that that's a, that's what she said joke right there, but I'm going to stop being a three-year-old. <laughs> um, so yeah, this knife is absolutely fantastic. It functions very well for a lefty. I had no concerns or qualms about it as a lefty. There's nothing other than this little pocket right here. So they added this pocket so as a righty you could spidey flick it, right? Which is cool. But they didn't add one on this side. So as a lefty, you don't have that. Now, can I stick my thumb in there and thumb flick it? I tried it a little bit, and yeah, if I get it just right, I can do that, but it's not very comfortable, and it, it's not very intuitive that way. Um, so it would have been really cool if they added the second pocket over there, which I believe they are doing on the newer versions of this. Um, so that'll be cool. As a lefty, to be able to spidey flick it would be awesome. That would just, that would actually make this knife even better than it already is. So can I recommend this knife for the, I think they go for like four or $500 new and probably more on secondary. For a right-hander, I can 100% recommend this knife because you have that spidey flick option. As a lefty, I would, I would say if you have the means and you really want one, yeah, go get one. But if you can get a newer model that has the second little cutout so you can spidey flick this as a lefty, um, I would definitely recommend getting that because that would add such a, a big component to this for me for fidget factor. Um, but if you don't care about that kind of stuff, if you just like flippers and you don't care about spidey flicking, then yeah, go ahead and snag one of these if you can find one. <laughs> That's one of the downsides to these is, you know, he can't make enough right now. So it's not that he doesn't want to sell you one. It's just that he can't make enough because the demand is so high for these. Um, so yeah, that's my review of the Vero Engineering Impulse. It's a fantastic knife. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay sharp.